Hi, we are FTC Team 13623, the Iron Tacos, a fifth year team from Egan High School. My name is Daniel, and August, Zach, Levi, and I will be sharing our experience with tournament strategy. We will cover tournament preparation, pit strategy, judging, and how to network with other teams. This presentation is a useful resource not only for brand new teams, but also for existing teams with less experience with in-person tournaments due to the pandemic and other factors. Enjoy. Overview. Strategy plays a very important role in first tech challenge. It's very important that you don't get caught off guard by the tournament. This way you can maximize your chance of winning awards and impressing the judges. You should also work with other teams to score well in the robot game. This will allow you to make sure your tournament day is smooth and a fun experience. Tournament prep. Make sure you plan enough time to test your design sufficiently before the tournament weekend so you aren't scrambling to finish a functional robot. This past year, my team made a bunch of modifications a couple of days before the tournament and we didn't have enough time to fine tune them and it affected our score in a very negative manner. Also, bring many spare parts and tools to fix and assemble or dismantle anything you could need. Assume that everything will break and can break. Spend time in practice working on driving and learning the flow of the match before the tournament, otherwise you'll come direly unprepared. Also, read the important sections of the game manual and know the rules and follow them. If you have any questions, it's always a good idea to ask a referee. Schedule overview. So, you start by arriving in the morning and set up pit. Then you go into your judging interview, followed by robot and field inspection. Then you do a couple practice matches, followed by a driver's meeting. Then you go into your qualification matches. Then you select your alliance, then you go into alliance playoffs, and then after that is the award ceremony. Time management. It's always important to time manage an FTC. So make sure you know what your schedule is on the day of your tournament so you don't accidentally go at the wrong time and then you're just screwed up for the rest of the day. That concludes my por uh, portion of overview. Pit strategy, tournament expectations. When you first arrive at the tournament venue, your team will be guided towards the pits. The pit will likely be one to two tables with your ta team name and number on it. Each table will have access to its power as well as practice fields. Pit setup, during the tournament, you'll spend a lot of time at your pits. It will serve as almost your base of operations while you're there. There, will, there are many rules and courtesies you're expected to follow. Although each venue is slightly different for the most part, whenever you're visiting the pits, you're expected to be wearing safety glasses and have your hair or any jewelry up and out of the way. There will also be at least one practice field for teams to use, use to troubleshoot, prepare for upcoming matches, or strategize. The practice fields are for everyone, however, you are expected to keep it in shape and accommodate any other teams that are waiting to use it. Throughout the day, there will be a lot of activities in the pits, such as judging, scouting, or strategizing with other teams, all of which we'll talk about in later slides, so it's always a good idea to have at least one person at your table. As well as being a workstation, your pit is also often used to show off accomplishments, advertise your team, so you should, and advertise your team, so you should try to keep it neat and tidy. A lot of teams have displays, awards, and other resources on their table to help show off their team's accomplishments and or unique aspects of their robot. Initial qualifications. Once your pit is all set up, you'll need to go through an array of qualifications before the tournament starts. You'll want to know the rules and make sure you meet all of the requirements before going in. The first thing you'll do is the robot inspection. During this, judges will check your robot measure it, weigh it, etc. to make sure that it's within all the requirements. Next, next you'll go to the field inspection, where you will do a mock match and make sure your robot doesn't damage any of the field components or any game pieces. If you don't pass one of the inspections, you'll have a chance to fix and retake it. Don't be afraid to ask other teams for, other teams for help. 
Finally, your drivers and coach are required to attend a meeting where referees will go over all the rules and expectations for the day. Judging. The judging interview. The judging sessions are some of the most important parts to any tournament for many reasons. One of the greatest aspects of the FIRST Robotics program is the variety of awards and recognitions available to each and every team. This allows for many unique, unique avenues to, su to success, however, almost all of them involve judging in one form or the other. Because of the different strategies available, it is important to make the very best of your time. Your first judging session will be in the form of a presentation where you'll be, where you'll be given five minutes to describe your team and robot, followed by a session of Q&A. You'll, you will not have enough time to cover every topic in the presentation. So you should make sure to introduce your team and then pick two to three major topics to cover. Then you can go deeper during the questioning. During this time, you'll have access to any additional documentation you prep. During this time, the judges will have access to any additional documentation you provided, such as the engineering notebook or portfolio. These can be incredibly useful tools for quickly and easily pointing out and explaining information about your robot. You will get scored during the interview and assessed for possible award nominations. The judges are looking for specific aspects of your robot that are exceptional or unique, whether that be a cool design, complex code, 3D printing, outreach with the community, or even just how your team has learned and grown throughout the season. Pit judging. Pit judging is much different than the interview, but still equally as, as important to prepare for. While the interview takes place before the start of the competition, the pit, will, the pit judging will happen during and between matches. If, there's any, if there is any standout feature to your robot that judges would like to learn more about, they may send an expert of the field to your team. You never know beforehand who will visit your team, so you should always be prepared and keep someone at the table as well as keeping your pit area organized. Pit judges will want to take a closer look at a specific aspect of your assembly or whatever they are judging. If your team is feeling strong in a specific area, be prepared to answer questions about it and how it functions. Once the competition is over, the judges will take into account field performance, the interview, pit judging, as well as any additional documentation to determine who they will, who they will nominate for awards. Our next topic is networking, specifically match strategy. First of all, what is networking? Networking is the process of building connections with other teams at the tournament. This is important because other teams can be a very helpful resource. For example, other teams might help you with certain problems that you're having with your programming or your robot, or if you're missing a certain part or tool or need a replacement that you didn't bring, asking other teams and making sure you can use that resource can be very helpful and turn your tournament day from an unsuccessful one into a successful one. Also, the robot game is played with two robots on each side of the field, and so you have to work with your alliance partner in order to actually succeed. Communication with other teams is the key to networking, and you have to reach out and build connections. There will be more information about how to do this on the next slide. Moving on to qualification matches. Again, make sure you know when your qualification matches are. The tournament will share a match schedule on the day of the tournament. Your goal is to win as many qualifying matches as possible so you can have a chance to captain a final alliance yourself or show what your robot can do to other teams that might pick you to be part of their alliance. Once you know which matches you are competing in, identify which teams you are partnered with in each round. Before you need to leave the pits to go to the round, go talk to the team that you are partnered with. Talk about what your robot's strengths and weaknesses are, and what your overall strategy should be for the round. This can include which robot will try to score which game pieces, or if one robot wants to play a helper role where they bring game pieces to the other robot to score. One example that I can think of of this is in the Skystone FTC game, there were blocks on one side of the field and a foundation to stack up the blocks on another side of the field, and some alliances decided that one robot should just bring the blocks closer to the other robot, which was constantly stacking up the blocks. And if you and your alliance partner think this is a better strategy, you might want to employ this or whatever is applicable to the game. Additionally, this helps you work better 
together as a team during the round and avoid mishaps like robot collisions in your pre-programmed autonomous or miscommunications during the tele -op portion of the match. While you play each round, make sure you are communicating with the other drive team so that your robots do not get in each other's way during the tele -op. After the qualification matches and alliance selection, which we'll talk about in the next slide, you could be part of the alliance playoffs. In this part of the tournament, in succession, the top four teams will pick a team to partner with for the final playoffs. They will also pick another team to join their alliance, for a total of three teams. Each alliance will compete in a playoff bracket, where each round is a best of three. The winners of the semifinals will face off in the final to decide the winning alliance. You may have noticed that only two of the three allied teams can compete on the field at the same time. This means that one team will have to be substituted out in each round. Each of the three teams must participate at least once in the first two matches. This means that if, two of the, if Team A and Team B compete in the first match, Team C will have to compete in the second match. In the third match, you can put in whatever two teams you want to play the game. Competition is tougher in the Alliance playoffs, so you must work together with your Alliance partners to communicate during and in between matches. You must decide what kind of strategy you want to use in the match and decide which team should sit the round out. For example, let's say that robots A and B might work well with robot C, but robot A and B might not work together so well because their autonomous programs might not work together. For example, they might collide or just not work in general for your strategy. Uh, in that case, you could have teams A and C compete in the first round, B and C in the second, and A and C in the last. In addition, it is important to be prepared to help your alliance at partners in other ways. For example, you should be ready to help with fixing programming, sharing tools, or making last minute repairs. This can sometimes be crucial support that allows you to get your robot back on the field just in time for the next round. We've had our fair share as a team of crunch time fixes for a broken part or correcting a programming error at the last minute. These moments are very exciting and nerve wracking and they can be the difference between winning and losing. Additionally, don't be afraid to ask your alliance partners for help if you, are need, if you need it or are confused. By, exploring, uh, by employing teamwork and communicating effectively with your alliance, you can work together to win more matches. There are a couple of things that you should come to know when you uh, are on the actual pit. The last few rounds, and well, throughout the whole game, people are going to start doing what's called scouting. Scouting is looking for a potential alliance to have for the end uh, phase of the tournament. You want to be prepared for scouting. You want to be prepared to be scouted and to scout. Having a clipboard is a great thing for going to scout and having a little info card is a good thing to have for when people come to scout. Um, when the teams do come, do want to share a little bit about yourselves as a team. And then you also want to share about the game and other things related to uh, yourselves as a team and what you can do on the field. Um, when selecting an alliance, uh, make sure everyone's on the same page, create priorities for what you want to accomplish on the field and in tournaments, um, and make sure you talk to, to talk to the teams that you want on your team, make sure everyone's on the same page. And spectating robot runs can be something for one to be good sports to your uh, comrades who are also playing the game and also uh, it helps you know what your competition is and what other teams can do on the field. If you have any additional questions, feel free to join our Discord server. Thanks for watching!